All right, so let's get started. We know who everyone is now. We're predominantly uh, faculty, but we've got some TLTC folks in here as backup. Diana is the person with the most experience, but I have the biggest mouth. So I'll be leading this. <laughs> she has the sense to keep her mouth shut and I don't. Yes, well, Julie knows. All right, so just to remind everybody, this is the first year we're doing this. Uh, the School of Economics and Business has been using digital measures for many years, and it was uh, for their faculty activities reports. And it was really um, set up for them. And we went through and did the best we could to get it set up for the other schools, but there are definitely still things that need adjustment. And Diana is um, working with digital measures to do some of those adjustments uh, so that it, it, each, it fits each school better. So there's a lot of things uh, for uh, the School of Economics and Business uh, accreditation that is visible to other schools and makes it kind of cluttered and confusing and we're getting rid of those. Um, but we can't get rid of them before the things need to get due this year. But we are working towards that. And as you come across things that would work better for your discipline, uh, if you would let us know, then we will work with digital measures. And if we can make those adjustments, we will. The, the software, of course, has its own limitations, but there are certainly things that we can adjust as we know what people need better. Um, and I just, I'm going to start by sharing my screen and Teams changed this recently, so I keep muddling this. I think I've got it. Whoops, that's not where I wanna be, although it's a lovely picture. How about starting here? All right, can everyone see my Blackboard screen? Yes? Yeah. All right, cool. So when you log on to Blackboard, center column right here is information, faculty activity reporting, digital measures. So you'll click on this, guests are not allowed to go to this organization. Well, if you get that, what you do is you start again. <laughs> Let's log in again, shall we? Let's see if it works this time. Yes. Ah, so now we know you have to make sure you've logged in. All right. And here is actually an entire course that Diana has set up that gives you information about it. Um, what is digital measures? Uh, it's basically ends up being a digital repository for your faculty activities reports. When it's changed into a Word document, it looks like our faculty activities reports that you're very familiar with, if you're familiar with them. What this enables uh, us to do is actually uh, find people for scholar of the year and support them in grants. And it will eventually also be very helpful for people who are working with promotion and tenure review because every year everything will already be uploaded. So, um, it's not a whole lot different from our early faculty activities reports, uh, but we'll, it will certainly help uh, with promotion, tenure, and review. Um, this is There is an entire training here with an introduction, but what I want to show you is how to get in, and I'll do a little introduction here. So follow this link to Digital Measures Dashboard. Watermark is the overarching uh, company that takes care of digital measures and I don't know Diana but I always end up right here I don't have to it's so it's a single sign-on is that correct yeah okay. so this is all of the information and what you need to do this year is just uh, upload information that you would normally upload into your faculty activities report you do not need to put your entire career in here you will do that over time if you are heading for uh, renewal, tenure, or promotion. Eventually, you'll need those things. But each year, what the, what's essential is just what you regularly put in your faculty activities report. So contact information, administrative data is awards and honors. If you uh, got a grant this year, um, Education, you'll want that in there. One of the things I um, 
found out Diana is that we don't have the masters of fine arts isn't an option and it looks really awkward when it says other. So that's one of the things that needs to go on our list. Uh, Pro professional memberships is something that I always included in mine. If you have a discipline where certifications and licensures are significant, um, again, you hit add item, information, always remember to click save that it gets in there. And I'm going to go, we can cancel that. Back, faculty development activities, because this is um, in this first section, faculty development activities are something that um, many of us do. And so you'd add a new item. And one of the things about this that I've found is that you don't need to enter information that you wouldn't have entered into your normal faculty activities report. So some of this in this one makes total sense, but in other ones, they're gonna be asking for information. You're gonna say, what's this? If it doesn't make sense to your discipline, don't fill it out and don't worry about it, okay? So these are the kinds of things that um, faculty do, conferences, Continuing education is where a lot of my work ended up. Internship, fellowships, seminar, tutorial, workshop, and other. So those kind of, um, what I like to do is try and find uh, something in here, because when you put other, it shows up as other, which I find a little frustrating. Um, the title of the workshop, who sponsored it, state, and uh, usually the official description, what I've done is cut and paste uh, official descriptions of things. What's absolutely key if you want something to show up in digital measures is the end date, a month and a year. Because if you don't have that, it won't show up in a report. So if the dean runs it to see who got grants that year so she can, you know, congratulate people, if you don't put the end date in, it won't show up on her report. So essentially what you need is an activity type, a title, and an end date. And if you don't want to put anything else in, you're not required to. It's helpful. And I find um, that for me, I use my faculty activities reports to keep track of what I've done each year. Like I find it actually a pretty valuable thing, even if it's a kind of a pain in the neck because I'm not good at keeping track of things as they happen. Um, I'm hoping with this, I will be better at it. Um, but it does when I do finally get it finished, it's a useful document, so try to be as thorough as I can. Teaching, most of our teaching will end up in scheduled teaching, and it should be populated just the way we years ago would get the information from our faculty, uh, the department secretaries or administrative assistants, uh, and then it ended up on the reports by the um, administrative assistants, but now it should end up in here. If it didn't end up in here, or if it's incorrect, please put a ticket in um, to IT. It will end up on Diana's desk and uh, she will try and work out what the issues are. So your scheduled teachings should be populated for you and it should be correct. So once we get the kinks worked out of that system, but until then check and proofread. All right, scholarship, um, contracts, grants, sponsored research. These are the kinds of things, uh, exhib exhibitions and performances, the visual arts and the visual performing arts are finally here. Intellectual contributions is an area where I put some things that didn't seem to fit in these other categories. Presentations, research in progress, act, uh, creative activity in progress, and that's up to you. I didn't always report this information in my um, faculty activities report. I sometimes reported finished projects, but you can if you'd like. And again, if it doesn't make sense to you, don't put it in. But let's take a look at intellectual contributions, just so you can see what some of the drop down menus look like. Contribution type, it's, um, mostly writing, but we do, we did manage to get in things like musical score, play, podcast, published work, short stories, website. So we've got quite a variety of things. If there's something that you do regularly or your discipline does regularly that's not on this list, please let us know so that we can get it added to the list and it doesn't end up looking like other, which is a little frustrating. So, 
in preparation, submitted. This is um, accepted, published. Uh, again, this is more towards the, the publication, but some of this might make sense in other disciplines. Title and contribution, larger journal. So again, if it is a uh, play that was produced, you know, the journal name is not relevant. So don't put that in there. You'd probably want to make sure you put in um, a description down here. And all of these have some kind of description. So you can absolutely ignore what isn't useful to you and put information in the description. Files can get uh, dragged and dropped. And again, um, an end date. A date is absolutely key if it's going to get included in a report. And what I did find, maybe I'll go back to that, um, that I like to make sure that when I entered things, I went and looked later to see when it showed up here to see what the title was, because I, I want this to read to make sense. So when it, the word other came up, I found that really annoying and I would try and fill that in with something that made more sense. All right, service, um, academic advising. I don't know if that, yes, I think that gets populated yeah, for us. It does. Excellent. Um, so we don't have to worry about that. Uh, but general service, that's something that all of us uh, always have. And um, what I'm hoping that we can do is have it show up in different categories. Because right now it prints it out in your faculty activities report as service and everything's jumbled together. And I would really like to see it separated out to departmental service, college-wide service, uh, professional service, so that people can make that distinction with headings. And we're gonna work on and see if we can get that to happen. Because we have those uh, distinctions, it would be nice if it, uh, gathered those appropriately with a heading. So again, um, you know, a lot of times we're just committee members. Sometimes we're attending an or, uh, orientation. Um, but if, for example, if you've said you're a committee member, you don't need to put member here as well. Um, if it doesn't make sense to add approximate number of hours spent per year, oh my God, I didn't bother with that. Like I can keep track of this. Uh, for some uh, licensure uh, issues, those sorts of numbers matter. In other situations, they don't. If it doesn't matter to you, don't enter it. If it does, do. So a lot of this I didn't uh, put in unless it made sense for that activity. And again, you've got to have an end date uh, so that it in gets included. All right. So that's kind of our overview, ah, we want to know how to do a Word document. Now, Diana, when I muddle this, will you please <laughs> catch me? Yeah. Oh, no. OK, so it's not rapid reports, it's reports, right? On top, yeah. OK, so this is where you get reports. All right, OK, activity report. Hello. Thank you. All right, this is where you set up your date range. I'm going to see January. No, I'm going to put this at, let's see, 2020 to December. No, let's say May 2021. All right, file format, Microsoft Word. Now I'm going to do that here because that, downloads it as a Word document, and then I can organize it, take a look at it, proofread it much more easily. And some department chairs want it as a Word document. Um, you can also do it as a PDF, correct, Diana? Yes. OK, so we could also do it as a PDF because some department chairs want it that way, and some department chairs want it entirely in digital measures. What I found helpful is that when I uh, put it into um, a Word document. Let's see if I can, if I open this, will you be able to see it? No. No. All I, right, I have to yeah, unshare. Yeah. Okay. 
I'll go to the screen. So this should look familiar for those folks who've turned in faculty activities reports. It's the same format that we used to have. It has the parameters that I put on there. Our scheduled teaching is in there. And um, let's see, I did clean this up. And these are some of the things that were annoying me. Individual, uh, invitational art exhibition group. That should be uh, bolded and it shouldn't be written twice. That kind of thing annoys me personally. Uh, so I'm hoping we can get those sorts of things sorted out. Um, and the other thing that we're gonna work on is we're getting some extra characters uh, in certain places and we need to figure out how to get rid of those as well. And again, uh, develop, scholarly development activities were printed out. I have no idea what order they chose to put them in, um, but they weren't in date order and I think that should work. And I would also personally like to see webinars separated from conferences, separated from um, local continuing education versus national continuing education. So that kind of information is what kind of thing we're working on. But if I get it as a Word document, then I can go in and manipulate it. Um, and that's what I found very helpful. All right, now, last time I couldn't, oh, did it unshare? Can you see me? Yes. Why didn't it work yesterday when I tried to do that? I didn't like you yet. <laughs> I guess not. So that's an overview. Um, you can also, like Diana said, we can save it as a PDF because you might be including supplemental information that's a PDF. Save it as a PDF. You can add those parts, create a larger PDF, and then forward that to your department chair. Keep it for yourself. Uh, if you're heading towards uh, renewal, tenure, and promotion, I would keep these all with all supplemental information as a Word document on my own computer in addition so that I can cut and paste if I'm doing other things, but you can always go back to information and digital measures. Questions? Tim? Uh, I wanted to point out there were some good questions over in the chat that are worth addressing, if you would, please. Absolutely. Is there a document that defines all of these terms? In the, uh, which terms are you talking about, Julie? Sorry, I was thinking, um, I, I think you were talking, we're in the service at that moment, and maybe looking at the words that come in the, like the drop down menus, mm -hmm. like workshop versus webinar versus tutorial. Like there's a lot of things that are kind of the same. Right, um, and I don't know if we have actual definitions. Certain disciplines always use certain words and other disciplines always use other words. Use the word that makes sense to you and in your description define it. Because I like, I went to online artist talks. That's not anywhere in there. You know, I decided that was continuing education for me as an artist. You know, like we used to have faculty activity reports as Word documents and we just put in there what we wanted. So choose it, define it for yourself and then be consistent right now. If that changes, like if we get more clarity in there, we will have that information in, in Blackboard. But until then, it's, you know, you're creating the document for yourself as well as the. Okay. I wonder if there's a simple list or outline for all the teaching service and scholarship categories and subcategories. Okay. To click through everything. Ooh, yeah, that actually might be a good idea for us to put together, to have like a, a document in advance so you can see that list. Okay, Diana and I can pull that off. We can do that. Let me write it down though, because I have a head like Siv. And would it be more helpful to have to get rid of the pop-up menus and just have text fields that you can enter your own text? Um, they were trying, I don't know, ask Diana. Um, that is, you know how that works in service now? Well, it's the same reason why it's not a good idea in DM because people are going to spell things differently. So, you know, getting an accurate sample of what you're looking for through um, 
these examples, somebody might write out the partner. Some people might write DPK. So, I mean, it's a really simple example, but you have the idea of what I'm talking about, that we kind of want consistency and if we let people type their own stuff, that goes at the window. Gotcha. So, yeah. So, um, so a list of the words in each of the drop-down menus so that you can see that in advance. Okay. Cool. All right. Jim, some of my collaborative colleagues did their DM already, and there was a place to include me as co-presenter or co-author. It now shows up in my document. How did they do that, and how do I do that for others? All right, let me go find that, and we can take a look. How's that? I think this is where I want to be. Can you see my digital measures again? Yeah. All right. So activities and scholarship, where was it? In intellectual contributions, probably, or was it, let's try it there. Add new item. All right, so. Yeah, but yeah. Okay, so this is where you can do, and you can continue to add rows. And I can't see the chat, Diana. Is this, um, Jim, is this what you're looking for? Um, yes, it is. Okay. So that's, that's where that would go. He's asking about presentations too. Oh, okay. I think it's in there also. Uh, I think it's presenta presentations is separate. It is. It's in there too. There it is. Yes. And you can add second presenter, you can add <laughs> probably quite a few. Yeah. And you do have some options to move things around a little bit as well. All right, does that cover it, Jim? Is that helpful? Yeah, he's good. Steve has a question. All right, cool. Um, where it says, I'm going to keep going, I'm going to start from the top, and so I will get to everything. All right, Carmela, I had a to petition for MFA equivalency for my training experience, and it was granted, so how will I include that information? I think other for the moment, and then a clear description for someone who's outside your discipline. Whenever I put anything official, I explain my discipline, because not everybody knows everything about other disciplines. Question other than that? Right, so, but is there some kind of, should I also include like the formal paperwork that Sun, because Suni Onianta granted that it sort of established me as, you know, as having that degree equivalency, so that, because that had been an issue, even though I'd taught full time at some point before that anyway. But, um, so do I, should I be including that formal paperwork somehow as well? Just so um, I think in terms of tenure and promotion, that makes total sense. For a yeah. yearly activity report, probably not. But if I'm applying, there's a promotion this year, so for next. Yes, then I would absolutely include that. Okay. I don't know. Yeah, I guess in digital measures makes sense, but you'll include that in your packet in general. Of course, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Okay, thank you. Ooh, uh, Ashley, where it says Vita under reports, is there a way to upload your CV? Oh, this is a talking, this is a very sore point. Technically speaking, there is, but it's a colossal mess. And so don't do it. <laughs> we are trying to work on that. I know, believe me, I know. But when they did have a CV, it, uh, those of us in the arts don't fit. And it's difficult for people outside the arts as it is right now. So it doesn't upload well. You kind of have to go through for every single item and add it with a drop down menu, which is doable if you have the 40 hours available. I know we're working on it. 
uh, that was a recent, they were beta testing it when we were starting with digital measures last fall and it is not up to snuff yet. So they don't really have that in there. Yeah, you're muted. Got a question? Um, okay, can you hear me? Yes. Um, so does that mean while we're doing this, we should be putting in things from the past so that it's, so no. only it's only counting what we did this year. What about everything we've done before that, that that's on our resume that has something to do with our career? If you're going up for promotion tenure review of any sort, then I would that's goes through workflow. OK, that's a different and you're going to add things to that. But this Work. isn't, yeah, workflow. And uh, we're doing that. Is there one on Friday? We're doing that on Friday. That's tomorrow. Um, it's much simpler than digital measures, but um, Diana, do you want to pop in here? Yeah, uh, as time passes, we are going to be using DM for other things also, like accreditation and program review. So as time goes by and as you have the time, I would start slowly putting in things okay. from the past, but okay. you don't have to do it all right now. No. Okay. That's good to know. And if if we're applying, like I'm going to apply for the second adjunct promotion this summer, I believe. Um, should I? I should have that stuff in there for that, right, Ria? Or that's a good question. I'm not completely clear. It's probably helpful. And then, but you'll also in workflow have room to put things in there as well. And this is the workflow part. I'm not clear on myself because I haven't done it yet. Or, you yeah. know, um, workflow is a little different from P and T. A lot of people are a little confused about that. Um, the things you're asked for to provide from P and T are always going to be in the air. So that's a whole nother process. We create those documents the same way we have previously. The only thing that changes is where those files get submitted. So we'll cover that tomorrow morning. So if you want to join us, you can get this group by that too. Is that at 11 tomorrow? Yes. Uh, no, it's at 10 tomorrow. Oh, 10. Good, to Good catch, Ria. <laughs> Yay. Tomorrow yeah. did you do Another that? meeting. Because um, I had a previous commitment at 11 oh. and I wanted to be in on that one. <laughs> all right, so I'm going to keep going. Um, Carmela, I can see your hand, but I want to make sure we get all the ones in. It's okay. just following up on Madeline's question. Though. Sure. Um, of course, now it just went completely out of my head. Oh, right. So if we are applying for that, um, also, or any promotion that anyone's doing, um, but that being this summer, fall. Does does this digital measures, I mean, can you just keep adding to, I mean, did, there's not like, it's going to keep just including information. It doesn't have a final, doesn't close on you. No. you nope, just go for it. And so you just make sure it's there by the time everything has to be submitted, then you're fine. And so it doesn't, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, just keep working on it. And okay. I think once we all get in the habit of working on it, it's going to be a whole lot easier. Yeah. We'll just be popping things in as they happen and we won't worry about it. I sort of mean about history though. That's it. right. Right. Yeah. That's yeah. And I have avoided that completely because that's going to be right. a real pain. But, but they won't have, that will be the way that they get the information that will be from this. So, I mean, I guess we'll be putting in a whole application as well and that will include things, but I'm understanding that this is, they do want the past here as well, not just the present and the future. Right. Eventually, yes. When you're putting in a right like so, that, 
Um, workflow will also have places for okay. some of those like uh, degree equivalency information, which right. doesn't really fit in digital measures, but will absolutely fit in that. I'll go tomorrow then. Thank you. Cool. 10 o'clock, not 11, just to make things complicated. Okay, Steve, where would one enter a document or table so that it would be included into the FAR? That's a really good question, and that's where my response would be to create, to download your information into a Word document or a PDF, and then put that into the Word document or PDF, and then send it from there, from, you know, as a Word document or PDF to wherever it needs to go because digital measures, as far as I know, Diana, doesn't do well with those things. No, you can't actually attach other files to records. The only kind of workaround thing is to add a hyperlink to a document that you save someplace else on OneDrive or something. Most activities in the air right now don't have separate fields for URL information. So that can kind of get messy too because the Word document or PDF will not know it's a hyperlink and not make it a hyperlink. Got so it. you'll have the string in there, but nothing to click on. Got it. So, so the, the other workaround might be what I described with either a Word document yeah. or a PDF. Is that, sorry about that, Steve, but that's what we've got for the moment. Does DM transfer to task stream too for things such as an external review? Diana? Shall we? <laughs> we keep passing the buck I, on that one. I have no, the same company makes my products. That's the only connection I'm aware of. Um, I don't support task stream. I've been told to stay away from it, actually. Um, so I think most of what test stream is used for, at least right now, are annually, annual reports for offices, department annual reports and the like. So. Um, your specific information isn't something that gets passed back and forth between the two. All right. All right. So, um, Anu, when we're submitting the FAR to our chair, we send it as an email attachment, Word or PDF. That depends on your department chair and your dean, what their expectations are. So I would clarify with them. I know that my department chair in the past has always asked for a Word document. And so that's what I provided to her. Um, I have since heard that our dean expects everything to stay in digital measures and she'll print it out as she needs it or you know gather it as she needs it. I don't think she knows that it's kind of not as organized as it could be yet, but we're all learning this. So I would check with your chair and your dean as to what the expectations are uh, and clarify. Uh, I need to use task stream template set up for my external reviewers materials. This is a good question, Jim. Um, let's figure out who to ask. It might be, is it EMZ that we would ask about this? Jim told me who was, I don't remember. Hey Jim, do you remember his name? At all. Yes, Shelton. Yeah, Josh, Joshua Nelson in, uh, in institutional research has been the one who's been doing most of task stream. So I think he's the one that would know that setup more. Okay. So, so Jim, he's the person that we're going to need to communicate with to see um, how that's working. Because, yeah, like I said, this is year one. Um, <laughs> and we got a lot of kinks to work out. So we'll, uh, 
we'll be figuring this out as we go. So any question anybody has, we need to figure out those answers. It's just going to take a little time. Other questions, comments? I do want to show off something that we did not cover, but I think would be useful for everybody. So let me find it, first of all. So. OK, while she's finding that, I'm going to speak to James' I, question. As chair, do um, others send their FAR to me, or may I just grab it from their FAR via the system? That, I think, I think if I were you, I would take a look at how it looks when you grab it. And if it's in this, in the, if it, if the formatting of it works for you, then that would simplify everything for everybody. Then the folks wouldn't have to send you a separate document. So um, I would take a look at it. And if your discipline translates comfortably and all the information is in there in a way that's useful to you, then just grab it from DM. If it doesn't, then we need to make what adjustments we can to DM, but that won't happen this year. Okay, so I'm going to share my screen. Oh, yeah. And I had to rebuild my Mac, so I'm being asked to give teams permission to do the show. Hang on. Oh, now I got a quick team show. I'm going to disappear and I'll be right back. So they had um, uh, the power outage, the normal power outage on campus, and it fried Diana's Mac. So she has been. Uh, Good thing she can do things like that. She's been rebuilding it. So, <laughs> so yeah, she's had issues here and there. And Shaheen just got bounced off. Can I ask a quick question? Absolutely. So when I'm loading things up to that, where I can put hyperlinks, I should do that. That That is a good thing to do. Like, for instance, if I did, if I was interviewed on a podcast, I can link to the podcast. Or if I have something up on a gallery website, I can link to that or to a show I was in. Or should I not do that? What I did, and I'm, Diana will correct me on this, is I put the link in the description. Okay. And there are places to drag and drop things in certain situations. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Um, but yeah. So I put it in the description. It doesn't keep it as a hyperlink. Somebody would have to cut and paste it into a browser. Okay. But where they have a drag and drop, it should work. That's my understanding. Okay. okay. All right. What's going on, Dai? Let me keep I do this now. Yeah. Oh, my God. Oh. Okay. All right. So, do you see my yep. web page here? Is it big enough? I, it's on the small side, but I think, I, I don't know. Can other people read it? I can read it mostly. Okay. So, in your blackboard, under about four activities on the left, the second link right up here should be very helpful to you. It takes you to a document like this. What this is, is it correlates everything that goes in your far with what parts of DM it comes from. Just to make sure you, you put things in a place where DM is actually going to grab it. 
and put it in the report. So you guys uh, should all have access to this and these links will actually take you to the correct place in DM and the fields down here that are in square brackets are the names of the fields. So it explains to you exactly how to connect both the FAR and DM. So I hope that's helpful to you guys. Can you go over where you got that again, where you found that? Yep. In the Blackboard course for DM is under about productivity right here. The one, two, three. Fourth link takes you to here, and then it's the second hyperlink right here. All right, cool. Thank you. Yep. Other questions, comments? Confusions. <laughs> this is definitely a work in progress. And like I said earlier, I think about two years from now, this is going to be a piece of cake. We'll have worked out the kinks in the reporting. We'll all be accustomed to it and we'll be able to train folks on it as they come in new and it will be a little smoother. But yeah, this is. This is like Diana said, she's teaching this course and this is the first time for teaching this course. She's just, you know, like so, and the first time you teach a course, it's always a little crunchy. So that's sort of where we are with this. But it is, it's basically our faculty activities report for the moment and we will be able to use it as people move forward with uh, renewal, tenure and promotion. Um, it will make that simpler as we go. But yeah, it's a little bumpy right now. If you are, okay, somebody's in the chat. Oh, good. I'm glad this was helpful. Cool. And again, we started with telling people to email me directly with issues, but we're starting to have people actually put in tickets to the service desk so that everybody in the TLTC can start supporting this product. So, you know, if I get hit by a truck, um, somebody else can handle um, whatever comes into us. And I'm putting that in the chat so that people have that. Yeah, we'll put it, that's, it also helps us keep track of what kind of issues people are having more easily too. And then if we were seeing the same issue over and over again, it's not only Diana who knows it, but all the folks in the TLTC can A, respond, and we can kind of work out the kinks in DM if that's possible. No getting hit by a truck. Yeah, like, yeah. Exactly. All right, I'm glad to hear this was helpful. Uh, and again, questions um, questions could come to me, but if you're really having troubles or issues, then it needs to go to, into the the service now. Take a desk, and it'll it'll get uh, sent to the TLTC, and somebody can help you with that. 
And yeah, tomorrow morning at 10, not at 11, but at 10, we'll be talking about uh, renewal tenure promotion and, and workflow, um, which will be news to me too, even though I'm supposed to know. So I'm going to definitely be at that. And so thank you for coming. You are all set. <laughs>